Hello and welcome to this tutorial on saving a shot in After Effects. The first bit we're going to do is looking at primary colour correction and vignettes and the second tutorial is going to be looking at secondary colour correction, how we can do some very detailed and very specific changes. So I have a clip in my project and I want my composition to be exactly the same length, frame rate, size as the original so I simply grab my clip and drop it in the new comp icon and I've created a new composition that is exactly the same length, size, frame rate, etc. as the original. And as we look at this shot, we can see that we have got some problems. It's a very interesting shot and we want to use it, but clearly there is a sort of colour shift to the whole thing. It's got this sort of orangey-yellow look to it that we need to get rid of. Also, the background's very well lit, which is great for separating the actors from the background, but the problem with that is that the audience might be tempted to look at what's going on behind rather than keeping their eyes on the action. So we need to do some sort of vignette to be able to get rid of the background and keep people's eyes on the actors. And thirdly, the big problem is this bucket, which is massively oversaturated. It's far too red. And because of that, it's going to be way beyond broadcast safe, it's not going to work on the web, and it's going to cause people lots of problems. So we need to be able to just deal with this bucket and get this bucket down to at least broadcast safe standards, if not slightly less, so that it doesn't draw people's attention away from the action. Now to do these colour corrections, I'm going to use a plugin which ships with After Effects CS3, CS4, CS5, and it's called Synthetic Apertures Colour Finesse. So we click on the layer, make sure it's selected, go to Effect, and then rather than going to our colour correction tab, we go all the way down to the synthetic aperture tab and go across to colour finesse. Click on colour finesse and it loads colour finesse onto the track. Now, colour finesse has two ways of working. It's got a simplified effect. As you can see, by the way, I'm using colour finesse 3, which is shipping with CS5. has some advantages over the previous versions, obviously, because it's an upgrade. But you should get most of this functionality with previous versions, although I can't promise this. Now it has two interface versions, the simplified interface here and a full interface which we'll look at a bit later on. You don't get these wheels actually in the full interface, which I think is a mistake, but even so that's the way it's worked. But you do get them in the simplified interface. Also, if ever you use curves, can I recommend synthetic aperture? Because on the simplified interface you have curves, but rather than having to do a drop down to select red, green and blue channels, you get all four of them in one. So you've got your master, your red, green, blue, and you can adjust them all in one go, which I think is a much easier way of working. So if you use curves. Now, I'm going to start off by looking at these hue offset wheels. Hue offset, what's it all about? Well, you've got four wheels. One says master. Now master means that it clearly affects everything in the shot. Every single pixel in this whole shot is going to be affected when I start playing around with this master hue wheel. So if I grab this point in the middle and start to pull it around, you'll see that the whole of the clip is being affected as I go around this hue offset wheel. All the color is being changed. I'm going to click reset at the top here. But I've got three other wheels, one that says shadows, one that says midtones, and one that says highlights. Now what's that about? What it's saying is, if you were to work, say, on the highlights wheel, all the pixels that are going to be affected are simply the ones that are highlights, like this white collar, the big top of this box, probably around this for her face here. It's not going to affect the whole clip, but it's going to affect all pixels that are brighter than a certain level. So if I start to pull this up towards the red, start to see it's very subtle but you can probably just see some changes in her face over here particularly changes in pixel color it's not affecting the whole shot it's just affecting these highlight bits and pieces okay click reset shadows are going to be the dark areas so this is going to be her probably the whole of her her blouse here is going to be dark this is going to be dark so if we just move the shadows and go up affecting a lot more because a lot more of the shot is shadow but it's not affecting the whole shot and it's certainly particularly affecting her blouse. Reset. And midtones, which the majority of this shot is, is probably going to be the hair, what's at the back here is jumper, these coats. Start moving the midtones 
and I'm going to color correct the majority of the shot in actual fact. But it's not affecting everything. The highlights are remaining unaffected and the shadows are remaining unaffected. It's just the midtone values. So you can color correct an individual series of pixels depending on their brightness value. Whether they're brighter than a certain area, they'll be affected. Darker than a certain area, they'll be affected. Or in the middle, they'll be affected by the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. So that's what this is all about. Okay, so how does it work? We can see that on this particular shot, we've got this hue, this sort of this orangey yellow that we really need to get rid of to save this shot. Now, the way color wheels work is this. I can find a similar hue over here in the color wheel. Now, to get rid of a color, I need to go 180 degrees in the opposite direction. So, we're over here in this yellowy orange area. We need to move towards this blue area to get rid of this, this sort of overlay, this, this orangey hue to the whole thing. So, I click in the middle and grab hold of the little dot and start to pull it. I don't need to pull very far, but start to pull it in the opposite direction until I start to see that color disappearing. Now, if I go too far, I'm going to put a big blue hue, so I don't want to do that. But if I take it to about there, and I do a before and after by just turning the FX button on and off, that's it before, that's it after. And we've pretty much neutralized that color wash, that overlay, that, 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 that orangey color that we wanted to get rid of. We made the whole shot a lot more usable simply by playing with this color wheel. And of course, you can pull it around and eyeball it as you like. So that's how we can use the color wheels to get rid of it. However, I think there's a better way, a more automated way that can make things a lot better. And I don't mean auto color. If I click on auto color, what's that? That's no good to anybody. So I'm just going to reset the whole thing. That's not solved the problem. No, there is a way in the full interface that's going to help us to get rid of these colors and sort them out. So I'm going to click on the button that says full interface. It'll take a moment to load and then we'll talk about color finesse three in this instance. Here it is, it's loaded up. Now, there's lots to say here, but the first thing I'm gonna say are two principles about color correction. Firstly, if you are going to do any color correction, make sure you look away from the screen on a regular basis to all sorts of different areas in your room because your eyes lie. If you concentrate on a shot and keep looking at the shot and do all kinds of color corrections, your eyes will get used to a color and start to lie to you about the changes that you have made. So it is very important when you're doing color correction to regularly and often look away from the screen to somewhere completely different so that your eyes can get accustomed again to what's real, not what you've changed. Because you'll change something and if you keep staring at it, you'll see a color that you've removed and you're still trying to get rid of it and you'll massively overcompensate. So rule number one, look away regularly. Rule number two is, in the ideal world, work in a windowless room where the light is constant. Because if you color correct in the morning with the sun brightly shining through your windows, you'll make a completely different series of choices to in the afternoon when the sun's gone over the top of the building and you're in shadow. Don't work in an area where the light is constantly changing. For ideal color correction, you need to work in a room which is just using a light in the middle of the room which is unchanging so that you can make a series of choices that are the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. So these are two little rules about color correction. I'm sorry if it turns you into a mushroom, but actually that's the ideal way of doing it. Now what have we got in this plugin? We have got a series of tabs. We're going to be looking at a few of these tabs a bit later on. So uh, I'm not going to go through them all now because they'll become obvious as we work through them. And over here we've got a series of graphs and we can choose individual graphs as we go up and down here, vector scopes, histograms, or at the moment we've got a combo, a series of combination graphs at the top so that we can actually see how our clip is working from a graphical perspective and not just from eyeballing it. And then at the bottom we've got various different ways of changing things, so hue, saturation, lightness, red, green, blue, different color spaces, we've got curves that we saw earlier, We've got levels that we're all used to, etc., etc. Plus, we've got something at the bottom here called secondary color correction, which I'm going to be looking at in the next tutorial. So we've got different ways of doing lots of different things and different ways of viewing things. Right, so we want to color correct this clip. Where do we start? Now, I want to use automated controls, so I'm actually going to choose curves of all things, because curves gives me three little color pickers at the bottom. If I hover over them, the one says choose black points, 
The middle one says choose grey points and the last one says choose white points. Now what this is going to do, it is going to deal with your white balance. Obviously I have a colour problem in this shot because the white balance is incorrect. What should be white, namely his collar here, has got a little bit of a hue shift on it. So I'm going to use this automated control, particularly this one here, choose white point, click on it, I'm going to go to his collar and I'm going to click on what I know should be white and Colour Finesse is going to make the adjustments for me so that the shot is based on this being pure white as opposed to being slightly yellow. Click on that and look at the difference. You can see up here in the curves that there's been a big shift in the blue curve. Now, I have this second tab down says Source. If I click on Source, I can see the original shot. If I click on Results, I can see the difference that we've made. So Source, Results. And in actual fact, I've got something here called Split Source. If you click on Split Source, it's going to show the original on one side and the change on the other. And in Color Finesse 3, I'm not sure it's the same in Color Finesse 2, you can actually move this around so you can see the difference in her face. One side looks like she's got a real problem with her liver, <laughs> to the other side looking a lot better. So you can actually have a look and see what the differences are by moving this around. Okay, so let's look at these other two. I can, if I like, choose a black point. Now some people don't like choosing a black point and a grey point because they feel it alters the footage too much. But we're going to try and see what results we get. However, what do I know as being completely black and what do I know about being grey? Well, I've got this button at the bottom that says Luma Range. Click on the Luma Range and it shows me whatever's white are the highlights, whatever is black are the shadows, and whatever are grey are the midtones. So now that I have a good idea of what's grey and what's black, if I go back to my results up here, I can see that this area in the blouse is actually completely black. So let's choose our black picker, choose the black point and actually go right in here in her blouse and click and see what difference that makes. Well actually it's not made a huge difference, it's shifted the graph over a little bit at the bottom here, and it's added a little point perhaps to the red, but let's look at the source, the original, and the result. I think that looks a lot stronger. We've got a much, much more usable clip, and we can look at our split source again, and we can see the difference is quite significant, particularly if you look at her face. Difference before and after. Okay, let's go back to results. Now the other thing we can do is we can choose the grey point. Now, if I go back to Luma Ranges, I want you to see these coats. These are three different colours. And his hair is a different colour. And his jumper is a different colour. However, when I go to Luma Ranges, all three coats are considered to be mid-tones. His hair is considered to be mid-tone, as is his jumper. So I need to be really careful, click back on results, what I choose as mid-tone grey and be prepared to get rid of it if it's not going to work. I'm going to click on mid-tone grey and I'm actually going to take a bit out of his hair up here. So I'm going to click just about there and see what difference that's made. Now that has made a significant difference but the difference has affected the background differently to the actors. If I do a control Z to get rid of that and this time I'm also going to take up the vector scope. So I'm going to click on the tab that says vector scope and you'll see this this red here, by the way, is the bucket that we need to get rid of. You see these squares around here? These are broadcast safe. If you go beyond these for red, magenta, blue, cyan, green and yellow, you are going to um, be beyond broadcast safe. You're going to be in illegal colour territory. So um, this bucket has got a real problem. However, I want to show you one line. This line here between the red and the yellow, this is called the skin tone line. And if you can get skin to align with this particular line here, it doesn't matter whether it's black or yellow or pink, it doesn't matter whose skin it is, it's the colour of the blood pumping through the skin. So if you can align skin to this skin tone line, you've done very well. Now when I chose my grey point in his hair, I want you to notice the shift that takes place in the vector scope here. Can you see it shifted towards the skin tone line? And in actual fact, you can see particularly here on Mr. Reed, and I think this is Mr. Reed and Miss, Miss Wright, or Mr. Wright and Miss Reed, I can't remember which one now. You can see his skin looks much, much better. However, we've got a shift in the background. Does that matter? This is now a choice that you have to make. Is it important that the actors look right and the background isn't quite right, or do you want the whole shot to look neutral? You have to make a call. For me, 
the most important thing are the actors and actually I'm going to do a vignette around much of this to try and keep people's attention away from the background so the fact that there's a bit of a colour hue at the background is a price I'm prepared to pay to make sure that these actors look about right so I'm quite pleased I made that choice now how do I apply all this? simple I click OK and I'm back in After Effects and you can see that it's applied it now I can go forwards and backwards just by turning the FX button off so before after before after and you can see we have made a massive difference to this shot I'm now going to twirl up kind of finesse because we don't need to see it for the moment because the next thing I want to do is I want to take people's attention away from these corners because the background was so well lit you can see a lot of detail and people might be inclined to look away from where the action is so I need to put something in here that's going to take people's attention away without drawing their attention to whatever is taking their attention away and that means I'm going to make a vignette now there are a number of ways of doing vignettes I'm going to show you the most simple one which you've probably seen before we're going to create a new solid so we go layer new solid and we're going to make sure our layer our solid is black so make sure it's black click OK and we're going to name it vignette now being dyslexic I always have to sort of pronounce this vignette v-i-g-n-e-t-t-e vignette make sure it's comp size click OK now I have a black solid above my footage the next thing we want to do is choose the ellipse tool so if you haven't got the ellipse tool up you just click in this little triangle until it comes up make sure the ellipse tool is up click on that make sure your layer is selected and then double click on the ellipse tool and that creates an ellipse it's the wrong way around but as you'll see in layer one here on the vignette layer we have a mask and we can either do one of two things we can invert it or we can go from add to subtract and that does exactly the same thing and we're beginning to see what we want to do this is going to take people's attention away and I can actually just quickly scroll through and see yeah you know what that'll pretty much work I might want to expand it just a tad but that'll pretty much work so how do I make this look like a vignette open up the mask and the first thing I want to do is possibly expand it just a tad so just expand it a little bit pull out the expansion with the hot text just a bit and then I want to massively feather the edges to give it a very very soft edge so I'm going to feather it out, I don't know how much I'm going to go, I'm going to eyeball it at the moment that looks about right, that's 220, say 225 but even so it's still too obvious so the next thing we need to do is select the layer hit T for opacity on your keyboard and just reduce the opacity a bit so that it's still there but hardly noticeable now I'm going to click away from it so that you can't see the vignette and now I'm going to turn the layer on and off off and on off and on maybe I might reduce the opacity a bit more so let's say let's take it down to say 50 click away and again off and on off and on and I've basically said to your viewer look there's nothing to see around the edges here this is where the action is and you concentrate people where the action is and you've affected a really good result so we've saved the shot we've got rid of the color hue we've made it look a lot better we've made the skin tones ideal and we've taken people's attention away from the edges the next thing we need to do in the following tutorial is deal with this wretched bucket my name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this useful thank you for watching mm -hmm.